Welcome everybody, this is Brother Meat here. Today we're going to talk about one of my new favorite classes. There's a subclass of the Magus, we call them Elkish Scions. Now, I'm going to start a new game just so you can see a couple things about the Elder Scion that make them different than the rest of their kind. It uh, doesn't matter what they look like, so I'm just going to just randomly pick through these things here. Race first is important. Uh, I always pick human, and as a personal preference, if you wanted to go crazy on this, you probably would go Asimer, something that gives you high dex and high charisma. Now, that might be Halfling as a good choice. Uh, even Gnomes, where you have good con and good charisma, would be okay. Strength penalties kind of suck, though, and I'm really not a fan of that. You're going to be weapon finessing with the kind of build that I'm going to show you, so these are viable options. However, Asimer has a, a heritage. First, let's get to Magus. Elder Scion. They get a heritage that they can get. I want to say it's the Angel Blooded that gives them. Uh, I'll just pick something here. Sure, why not? Um, that gives them bonuses to charisma and strength. You could just as easily find charisma and dex there you go the muse touched azata blooded would be probably the way to go if you wanted to be a uh, finesser someone that uses a weapon finesse uh, trait uh, feat that allows you to basically rock something like a rapier for his good crit range something that you can cast your melee touch attacks through which is what magus is pretty much itself at a good charisma score which is what you're going to be casting as unlike the other magus Magi that use intelligence, you use charisma as an elder scion because you are a spontaneous caster, which is where this build is going to excel. Now, we're not going to pick that race. As I mentioned before, I like to go human. I still get a plus two to a specific trait. In our case, it'll be charisma. Um, and I'll have reasonably decent stats across the board. I will get an extra feat, and that will be extremely useful for me. Uh, but it is necessary because some of these feats are kind of hit or miss. Um, from there, uh, notice something else that uh, Elder Scions get because they're basically sorcerers that wield swords and have armor. They also get bloodlines, much like the sorcerers do in the actual sorcerer class. Notice that you get free stuff like spells at specific levels and notice something else. I'm going arcane. Uh, I want to do arcane bloodline. This is not the only option. If you wanted to go with more of a strength based fighter magus, I would highly recommend the Abyssal Bloodline because as you can see at level 9, 13, and 17, you get an extra 2 strength. And that's an inherent strength bonus. So you can modify that yourself. You can up it with spells. You can up it with gear. But you will still always have that plus 2, that plus 4, that plus 6 strength. So you can start off with a strength of 10 and end at level 20 with a strength of 16 and not invest 1 point in strength. That's okay. You could really pump that through the roof, start off with a strength of like 15 or 17, and really end with a really, really high strength, really slaughtering guys left and right with your strength attacks. So that is a viable option. I just don't particularly like uh, the idea that my ancestors were raped by demons. Uh, they say that you can pick any alignment and choose your own destiny, but uh, I still hate the idea. Just the same as uh, the devil line, the infernal bloodline, only they don't get any kind of bonuses like that. They certainly don't get the plus to any physical stats, uh, and I don't think anyone else does. The other bloodlines that I would suggest that might be interesting to me and others are the Undead Bloodline, because you get a lot of really good stuff early on. Death's Gift is one that gives you some really good protection right up front, cold resistance, as well as DR5 against all weapon attacks except for magical ones. That's pretty nice, and it goes up to plus 10. Uh, at level 9 and you will always have that and then over here if you get all the way to 20 the one of us notice how you get immune to cold paralysis and sleep spells you get a plus 4 saving throws against spells and spell like abilities cast by undead and you get a dr5 against all damage types so you literally uh, whatever they're swinging at you you will always absorb at least five points of damage they cannot penetrate that with anything else very very cool uh, and there's decent spells that you know, smack of being undead or working with necromantic practices. Vampiric Touch will be a spell that you will enjoy. It's free, and you can actually cast that through your weapon using spell ability called Spell Strike. It allows you to take a melee touch attack, cast the spell, and then you attack with your melee weapon if it strikes. Not only does the weapon do damage, 
but the melee touch attack goes off, so to speak. It's kind of combining, it's a little weird, fidgety, but it is still pretty cool. And you'll see that usually when you get to level 20, there's always some kind of big uber awesomeness of whatever bloodline you pick. Like here we have for Serpent Bloodline, you can turn yourself into a large spirit naga. Uh, you're immune to paralysis and poisons and other stuff. Same with the Infernal Bloodlines here, we're immune to uh, fire and poison and a decent resistance to acid and cold. And that's just always there. Now yes, you have to get to level 20 to get it, but it's still fun to get. Celestial is equally weird. Acid, cold, and petrification, resistance to electricity, fire, racial bonus saves on poison. You know, good stuff. And again, the spell choices differ depending on which bloodline you pick. The exception of these draconic bloodlines, which are all pretty much the same. The only real difference being is that they're usually tailored to a specific damage type, an element of some kind. So black dragons have acid, so you're resistant to acid or immune to acid, or you cast acid spells, and you get the idea. Same with the Elemental bloodlines, air is electric, earth is acid, fire is obvious, water is cold, and with a few little fidgety shuffling around here, which is slightly different depending on which one you pick, by and large you get more of the same thing each time. It's just centered around cold or fire or acid or electric damage. Still, solid choices. There's nothing wrong with any of these. I like arcane bloodline for a good reason. One. The spells that I get for it are pretty cool. I get a familiar if I want it, which I do. I get magic missile for free. I'll get combat casting adept, which gives me some concentration check protection. Casting while you're basically being attacked is always a bad idea. Concentration checks are necessary. So the higher your concentration skill, the better off you are. This is a way to get it up. So instead of buying combat casting, I can just get combat casting adept for free. By the time I'm level 20, I basically get Arcane Apotheosis, which means I always make my concentration check. I cannot be interrupted. That's pretty pimp. Now, I have Invisibility, Dispel Magic, Dimension Door that I'll get for free, Break Enchantment I'll get for free, True Seeing I should get for free, Banishment I do not get, neither do I get Power Word Stun or Rocks. These ones are level 7, 8, and 9 spells. And similarly, I'm assuming for these other classes that give you spells at those levels, you do not get them. Because as an Arcane uh, Caster in the Magus line, the highest spell progression you get is 6. So these spells that they're saying they're giving you do not happen. You do not see these. Um, that's okay. Sucks. But just so you know that, and I forgot about this, so when I actually... Did this I specifically did not pick dismissal because I knew I was gonna get banishment apparently I was wrong banishment is definitely better but I don't get it so it's, it's actually worse uh, another reason I like arcane bloodline and this is the really the seller for me is I get three free spell picks at here at 9 13 and 17 and these spells are not only the ones that you find in your uh, magus spell pick choices from level one through level six obviously you have to be able to cast the spell to be able to pick it um so at level nine you'd only be able to cast a uh, pick like a level three spell and lower let's say but this also lets you pick spells that you do not get necessarily in a magus school you can get these as any sorcerer or wizard level spell of the equal level so this opens up a whole new world of spells that you have access to now now you don't get a bunch of them you just get one here one there and one here that's three and everybody that goes magus eldritch scion at least at level 19 get greater spell access which allows them to get six more free spells from that wizard spell book so again that's nine spells now that i normally would not have had access to as a magus that's pretty cool now what those nine are and it's on you guys to decide what's best. I'll give you my choices, but you'll get the idea very quickly about there's no right answer, there's no wrong answer. There's some bad choices out there. We'll try to steer you away from them. But by and large, this is going to be what kind of makes or breaks this build, in my opinion. That and metamagics, which are extremely important. Now, one of the appealing things about being a magus is not only do you have the ability to enchant your weapon using your arcane weapon in your eldritch pools, this is a a bunch of points that you arbitrarily get each day that allows you to buff a weapon, make it a flaming weapon or a frost weapon or a shocking weapon. 
or a plus one plus five weapon, which actually can stack with a magically enchanted weapon already. It's making you really tough when it comes to doing damage and hitting your target. But you also get the ability in this particular class, in almost the, all the other Magus classes, uh, the ability to wear armor and be able to cast spells without it being a problem. And you will actually eventually learn the ability to wear heavy armor and again, be able to cast spells without there any arcane spell failure. That means you can wear full plate mail, guys, which is like the best armor in this game. And I think you get to like an, uh, an AC of 20 with just mundane armor with your dexterity being high enough, which I think you only need to be 12. And you can have the best armor out the gate uh, once you get to level 13. And of course, you're gonna to want to get enchanted versions of that armor. It's gonna be heavy, so strength's gonna be an issue. But if you're making a strength-based build, you can have a pretty tough little magus. We're going dex because we want to be able to kick probably either medium or at the very least early on we'll have light armor that doesn't impact us, still gives us an armor bump, and we'll have pretty decent dex to begin with anyway. Uh, eventually we'd like to graduate to medium armor just so that we can get something probably like a, a not plate mail, what's that one called? Breastplate. Uh, breastplate with the dexterity we have will give us to a, a, a armor class of 19, which is the second best armor class you can get with armor. That's pretty good. And I'm pretty happy with that. We can buff ourselves with spells from that point on. Uh, the other thing that you get for being a Magus is this ability to turn some of your levels uh, that are treated as you are a fighter. That only happens at level 10 and up. Uh, but basically you take whatever your level is as a Magus and you divide it by two. And that's how many levels you're considered for having for a fighter. What does this mean? It means you get to pick feats that are only fighter centric. And there's a really good one in there that I actually have picked, and you'll see that when we actually look at the build. Now this is a pretty tight build. It's not finished, it's not perfect. Um, certainly there's gonna be mistakes that are made, but for point attributes, what I normally start is, well first let's go with our charisma bump. We know we're gonna do that. I wanna get that one to at least 16. 16 is the highest that you need to cast all level six uh, MAGA spells. Remember you need to have a uh, 10 will allow you to cast the cantrips, 11 will allow you to cast level 1 spells, and then 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, you get the idea. Above that is just extra free spells, also increases your DC's uh, ability for your spells to be resisted. You know, someone have a saving throw check, the higher your DC, the less likely they are to make their saving throw, which obviously is ideal for you. So you want to have your charisma up, but this isn't like a wizard where you're going to focus on being a wizard and have like a ridiculous 20 plus intelligence. You're not going to have that many spells to really capitalize on that. You're going to be doing damage, which means we invest in other things. So getting this up to say 18, buffing it with other things like spells or gear will be useful, sure. But 18 is where we're going to probably stop. Wisdom, we're going to get that to 12. That's going to be our lowest actual stat. Everything else, let's just put them at 13 for now and see where we're at, okay? So you can see we have one, two, three, four, five abilities that are odd numbered, which means that we don't get the next increase in modifier. So you see if we go to 14, we get a plus two. 13, we're at plus one. We have from level one all the way up to level 20, we'll get five more points. So at the very least, we want to try to keep these to be five or three or one ability that's an odd number so that we can always end on even numbers, right? That's our goal. So 17, we're gonna leave alone. Intelligence, we'll probably leave alone. Con is probably good. We wanna make sure to hit stuff. So we'll get dex up to 15. It's still an odd number. So again, one, two, three, four, five. So at level four, I'll level up intelligence. That'll get me more skills. And I wanna make sure that I have the few skills that I do have, I wanna make sure they're high. Those will include things like use magic device, at least take that up to level 10. Persuasion, we want to have high because we have good charisma. Perception, we want to have high because we want to see things. Maybe athletics will be useful, so we'll probably pump a little of that. We'll actually invest maybe a little bit uh, in Arcana, but by and large, these will be the four that I really want to focus on. Maybe uh, Lore Nature. This one will actually be useful for us, and you'll see why in a little bit. Now, these are my stats. And again, I've done these so many times that this is usually my spread uh, in some formation thereof. These will be the points you see. 17 will be my main stat, whatever I think is the most important. Strength, dex, intelligence, whatever, will be the high one. And I'll be the one that gets bumped here. From there, the rest of these are 
good, just not great. This one's probably the second best one we have, obviously, and this will be the next ability that we really want to focus on, making sure that we get dex-based gear, dex-based spell bumps, stuff that makes sure that I hit my target. And the reason for this is, is because while we're going to be a melee-er, we're not going to be a strength melee-er. We're going to be ones that focus on dexterity, which means weapon finesse. Now, if you go and see the abilities that we get right off the bat, the first two feats we get, remember, we're human, so we get an extra feat. So the first feat we get, or sorry, weapon finesse, excuse me, that allows us to use any of those light weapons, Elven Curve Blade, Astok, Rapier, which is the one we're going to go with, a Spike Chain. We can use our Dex modifier instead of our Strength modifier for our to hit chance. This will give us a plus two upgrade right now instead of a plus one. Later on, it'll be plus three instead of a plus two. So you'll see that Dex will be extremely useful. It also allows us to swing with still a bow and do pretty good. So Dex will be our next main stat. The next feat that we want to get, since we will be using bows, crossbows, as well as ranged spells that have a to hit check. We need point blank shot. We're going to be up in melee. Chances are they're going to be within 30 feet. I'd like the extra damage and I like the extra plus one to hit chance. Point blank shot's necessary. From here, because we picked the arcane one, we can get either an arcane bond with an object which allows us to cast one more spell a day. Basically we just pick a spell that we say, oh I want that spell back and boom now you have it. Yeah. You got my eye rolling. Can you hear it? Or you can get a familiar. And the familiars all give you a very nice plus two to your perception checks. And some random bump to something else. Persuasion, uh, which is a good one for us. Tarantulas give us athletics, which is useful. Fortitude saves are useful. Reflex saves. Mobility checks. It's not that useful for us. Armor class. There's only plus one, but it's free. And as long as that pets out, you get that plus one armor. That's not bad. Uh, we'll probably surpass that. They don't stack, so I'm going to err on the side of caution and say not necessary. Uh, we have other ones as well. Here's one of my favorites because it gives you plus four to initiative. I actually opted not for that one. Chicken's another f uh, favorite because of the plus three hit points. Not per level, I don't think. It's just per that first level. But it's three more hit points. Keep, could keep you alive. Cat is the next uh, one for stealth. Centipede for will saves. Seems weird, but whatever. Uh, now we have other ones for, like, knowledge. So here's knowledge world for the duck. Dog is the one I'm going with because of the lore nature. We don't have access to it yet, but we're going to, and therefore we'll get a bitter increase here. As next level you'll see we'll get a green dot there. Now, that's our abilities. Last thing to pick here is... Um, knowledge world, I already have that, or do I have that? Yeah, I have that already. Lore of nature, I'm getting a bump from being the dog. That doesn't mean I have the class skill, lore of nature. So this will be the pick we go with here. So that basically goes with the dog and helps make sure that I have the best skill in lore of nature now. Uh, from there we go to spells, and you have two spells you can get at level one. Let's drive you to the first two that would make sense for your Magus build. Uh, in this level, you want melee touch attacks. That's Corrosive Touch, and that is Shocking Grasp. Either of these now can be cast at level two, and you channel it through your weapon, which in my case would be a Rapier. Those would be decent spells. And there's not very many melee touch attack spells, so we'll point these out to you as we get them. From there, we just I name no it, use for give this. them test name. We give them alignment, neutral good, chaotic good, whatever. You can't, you can't be, you can't actually be anything. Oh, good deal. Oh, it's the Inquisitor I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we can be whatever we want. And we can change our colors if we need to. But by and large, this is our guy. We have an, uh, a decent starting point. We're okay with ranged attacks at level one. We're not very good at melee attacks at level one, but it's because it's counting our strength. They give us that rapier. Uh, and we actually will be swinging a lot better than this we swing in like this instead and again plus one and plus two don't seem to be that different but it's definitely better you can see the reasoning behind it uh, from there we would go through the tutorial uh, level up the old-fashioned way which would take us forever or we could cheat what we're gonna do is cheat I'm gonna cut this part out and we'll come back when I actually have my pre-generated level 20 character ready to rock and roll and I can tell you all about her and be right back and we're back. 
Now, here's my character. First, let's pop open the screen here and see what we have to show for ourselves. So level 20 character, you see the stats have all evened out nicely. 14 for strength, 16 for dex, 14 for con, decent intelligence, wisdom still subpar, but better than 10. It's certainly better than a penalty, and our charisma is the highest stat we have at 18. Now, this and the dexterity would be probably the two you really want to focus on with maybe a splash of constitution in there just to make sure that you don't die immediately after getting hit with a big heavy attack. She's pretty tough. She can wear the heaviest armor and she can cast spells in that heaviest armor and not have a problem with it. She has a pretty good base attack bonus. Uh, if we go to Marshall here, you'll see that at a 15, which is because we have three-fourths progression as a Magus class. So it's better than a wizard or a sorcerer, worse than a fighter or pal uh, paladin or barbarian or right in the middle there with like the rogues. So this is decent, gives us three attacks at level 20 uh, and no better than that. Now we can increase that with spells like haste. I think you can actually get another attack in. We can increase that with ranged attacks if we do things like rapid shot. But the, the general gist is we can do basically three attacks around with a melee attack. We have a pretty good melee attack right now at 20. We can get this two points higher uh, with uh, let me find it. Spell combat and this feat here, True Magus. Plus two circumstance bonus on all attack rolls. And while spell combat is on. Now let's go back to our character sheet and you'll see the difference right there. Boom. Plus two to thanks to the True Magus. Now that is again before we take into the account the fact that if we cast a spell in combat, we'll cast the spell and then we'll swing with our sword, our rapier. And then the rapier will get a minus two penalty. So basically this is countering that minus two penalty is what that's really doing for us. If we wanted to go crazy and we really want to make sure our spells land, we have spell DC increases. We had to shut this one off, turn that one on. You see it's one, two, or three, either or at, as a true magus. Or if we really need spell penetration to work, we can get a plus two bonus to our spell penetration check. Now that is in addition from what I understand to spell penetration and greater spell penetration, which I have not picked. But if you really felt you need to, this would be extremely useful for help you make sure that you penetrated those uh, defenses. We normally, we'll probably leave it straight on here in the True Magus attack bonus just to make sure we have a pretty good attack bump. Going back to our character, you'll see that for the Rapier, we're doing pretty good. We have a weapon focus and a greater weapon focus, which is probably overkill. If I redid this, I need the weapon focus Rapier, and I need it for a reason, and I'll show you why here in a moment. The greater weapon focus was like, uh, I need something at the end. I uh, might as well have a better chance to hit with my main weapon because that's the weapon I'm going to be using. I'll find the best rapier I can find, and this will be the weapon I use. Now, it does decent damage. Part of that is because of the fact we have a feat that allows us to convert our dex a bonus into damage. Uh, it's a finessable grace or some such. You'll see it when we go to our abilities. Notice how my ranged attacks and my melee touch attacks have a pretty decent bab as well, or excuse me, an attack bonus. This one here is rocking a 21. Uh, that's uh, Ray spells. Notice I have a weapon focus in Ray, and there is a reason for that as well. It's going to capitalize off my dexterity because it's a dexterity based move. Melee touch attacks are weapon finessable as well, so you see my dexterity is being calculated in it as well. And again, Ray and touch attacks uh, work off of the touch armor class, which you can see in my case, is the lowest one that we have here. It could be the same as the normal armor class if they're wearing nothing, but basically touch attacks ignore armor, ignore shields. So if you see here the calculation right there, plus 10, 10 plus your armor bonus, plus your shield bonus, plus your dexterity modifiers, if any, and plus other any modifiers like your natural armor class and such. Notice how touch attack is basically your base and your dex. So if their dex sucks, they're basically having a touch attack uh, armor class of 10. Super easy then for my guys to hit them with ray spells or for melee touch attacks. I may even rather, if it's a heavily armored guy, not use my rapier, which has a 22, and use my touch attack, which is only a 20, but I'll ignore his massive armor class bump, because all I have to do is walk over and boop, touch him on the armor, on the shoulder, on the shield, and it will still fire off. So touch attacks could still be useful in this. Mostly we'll be channeling it through our rapier, though, as a true Magus does. Now, let's go to the abilities. There's a lot of them, and we're not going to go through every last pick. These are the ones that come naturally 
as you level up and you'll see some of them uh, are named like new arcana these are the free spells that i got in this case i picked constricting coils uh and the other one i got sense vitals this is the very first one i picked this one is level nine very useful for being sneak attack damage and i'm going to have greater invisibility i might as well do maximum damage this is a good way to do it from there after constricting coils this is the equivalent of hold monster same level as hold monster it's an enchantment like hold monster it's the same will save as hold monster and it does damage which hold monster does not do why you would want hold monster then when you have access to constricting coils i do not know but i'm going to take constricting coils the last one uh, was this one here new arcana eye bite i have never tried this spell the premise behind it's very interesting it's almost like a toggle you activate the spell you pick a target and that target gets debuffed one of a variety of ways depending on their level it's auto hit move from what i can tell so it always works assuming they're not immune to the effect i think that makes them nauseous or some such and as long as it's working it will always work on that target for me while i'm attacking him after he dies if the spell is still in effect i think i'm allowed to switch targets to a different single target and focus fire on that guy so i'd like to see how this one works this may not be the last one in my build but so far i want to give it a try notice how we get greater spell combat this will allow us to have increased concentration checks as we're casting spells in combat i did not actually get spell combat or excuse me combat casting as a feat because we were given access to these combat casting traits hopefully that'll be enough as i level up to not really be an issue and when you, f you finally get to arcane apotheosis you never have to worry about a concentration check again you always pass them so there was really no need for me to waste a feat on it even early on i would just tough it out and hope for the best remember this is a team-based game i'll have teammates help me and again there are spells that are listed here that i will not have access to so don't confuse yourself in thinking you're going to get this because you will not get those three spells um from there before i dip out of the special abilities and go into the feats notice how we're getting arcane weapon that is a, an ability for us to activate we can use points uh arcane pool points to buff our weapon either weapon it will work on bows as well as or the rapier that i'm going to use so i can literally do more damage more accurately that's a very nice bump and it will last for a decent amount of time too because i have a uh, special ability that increases the duration it's called enduring blade so whenever the magus enchants his weapon using his arcane pool he may spend one additional point from his pool to increase the duration of the enchantment to one minute per magus level so if i don't have a magic blade i do now as long as i have at least two points to spend one to activate the uh, enchantment the plus one or plus two plus five enchantment and then another one for the enduring blade quality which will make it enchanted for a decent long while for me that'll be nice from there the fact that i can wear armor and still cast spells is going to be extremely useful and then i have a variety of other things that will enchant my strikes from there other things to point out for you super quick uh wand wielder and there's a wand mastery i want to say in here somewhere yeah those two feats i picked i couldn't think of anything else to pick in those choices these are the two that stood out early on uh, one of them, uh, the, the wand caster, the one I have here, wand wielder, thank you. The wand wielder allows me to use that in place of casting a spell while using spell combat. And spell combat is the toggle that you turn on here that it gives you the ability to cast a spell in combat and then immediately attack with your weapon in combat as well with a minus two penalty. And if it's a, a spell like, say, Acid Splash, where there's a attack check it also suffers that minus two penalty it's kind of like dual wielding one is with the spell the next attack is with your weapon and that's okay now we will have that on because we need it for our plus two bump but we'll be using spell strike most likely to use our melee touch attacks and channel them through the weapon the reason for that is it crits based on the crit now of the weapon and we have the best critting weapon in the game a rapier there's three others that are like it but basically rapier is the one that's weapon finessable and that's the one i'm running with 18 through 20 gives me the ability to crit on a natural 18 19 or 20. if i get a keen rapier then i can crit on a 20 19 18 17 16 15 on a natural 15 or higher i crit 
and if I crit with a, an enchanted uh, melee touch attack, it will do double damage. So I'll do, let's say, uh, I'm doing Shocking Grass. I'll do twice as much damage with the Shocking Grass hit because it critted, and I'll do whatever damage I do uh, that's natural for my weapon, which is um, two times for the Rapier, uh, 1820. So, again, it'll be the same. It'll double the damage of the weapon attack, and it'll double the damage of the spell that's being channeled through the weapon attack. That'll be nice, and there'll be a better chance for those crits. So hopefully more damage. That's the goal. From there, the only other thing then to point out is to you, uh, the feats that I basically purchased. You've already seen that I bought Weapon Finesse right off the bat. Because we're human, we got another free one right off the get-go, and I went with Point Blank Shot. This will be necessary for things like your ranged touch attacks. You're going to be in battle anyway. You're probably going to be within close range. You're going to be armored up, so hopefully you'll be protected. And you'll be able to literally beam them with a better plus one attack roll, as well as a plus one damage, and it does work on your ray spells. Only once, so if you're hitting them with like three different beams of attack, like say Scorching Ray, I think only the first one gets the plus one damage, but we can check that when we actually play. Weapon Focus Rapier was necessary, and you'll see why here in a bit, but I'm going to be using that as my main weapon anyway. This is going to be the weapon I basically stick with, and I'll just make sure that I find the best Rapier I can have and make sure my character gets it. Uh, we have three different meta magics that I've purchased as feats. Not necessarily the three that I'm probably going to stick with, but these are the ones that I have. I have Extend, I have Reach, and I have Maximize. I thought I had Empower. Apparently I missed it and I didn't see it. Um, but if I were to do it again, I would get Extend, I would get Reach, and I would get Empower. And the reason for that is that they're low investment. Extend and Reach only increase your, the spell level by one, and Empower increases the spell level by two. Maximize increases the spell level by three. What that means is, as a level one spell, I can maximize the damage, but now I have to cast it as a level four spell. That's a huge investment, and chances are at level four, I have a better damaging spell. I would still probably make it, leave it in my spell book, keep it in your back pocket in case you really need acid damage, and it's the only spell you have left of your repertoire. Well, now you have it. But Empower would probably have been a better way to go there. But again, from there, we have Fencing Grace with the Rapier. Again, Weapon Focus was necessary to get it. This one allows me to literally use my Dexterity modifier instead of my Strength modifier to increase my weapon damage. So you see that's why my weapon is doing more damage than it should be, because I'm using the Dex and not the Strength. Good news for me is, is I can actually bump my Dex with either a spell, gear, or a variety of other ways that will allow me to increase the damage output then of this character. From there, you see my armor in proficiencies, and again, I can cast spells with light and then medium, and now finally at the end, heavy armor, and be perfectly fine doing so. I have more metamagics. I have precise shot, because we are going to be casting spells and shooting bows into uh, melee range, and since I'll be probably a frontliner, or at the very least a close to frontliner, maybe not the first guy up in battle, but the second guy at least, I um, might be able to kick off a shot or two that's a range touch attack. Precise shot is going to be necessary to uh, increase my chances because I will suffer from that minus four penalty. We have weapon specialization rapier, and you'll see that that's important for another reason here in a moment. We have weapon focus ray. This will give me a plus one bonus to my attack rolls with ray spells, as you've already seen. And we have several of them, so that's pretty decent. Uh, weapon specialization ray. And that weapon specialization allowed me to get Point Blank Master Ray. That Point Blank Master allows me to uh, avoid attacks of opportunity while casting this particular type of attack. It could be for bows or crossbows, but I went with Ray spells because that's what I'm going to be slinging. And I figured this way I don't have to worry about provoking attacks of opportunity. Now this may be redundant. I may be uh, missing the point here, so if anyone knows different, and say, oh my god, you already have Precise Shot or something else in the uh, combat casting abilities of Omegas that prevents this from being an issue. So this could be a waste of a feat, but I don't think so. So I'm hoping that this is going to do what I want. From there, again, more meta magic, and again, this probably should have been the Empower version, but oh well. Critical Focus was a pick, and at the end, like a forethought, uh, my afterthought, excuse me, and the reason for it was it increases my chances of critting. Once we get the successful crit roll, you have to roll again. So this will increase my chances of confirming a crit. 
from there though I was going to get something that capitalizes on critical focus and I forgot to grab it so this greater weapon focus rapier was probably a waste I would probably switch back out and grab um, like blinding criticals or some such what that means is if you critical uh, with that weapon or any attack I should say uh, it blinds the target because you critted that target or you can uh, hamper the target in some way you know like you you debilitate them in some way there's like three or four different critical focus feats that capitalize on you critting something that's what I'd probably go with uh, whatever lowers their dex or their strength would be good uh, blinding would be decent you know I'd rather them not be able to hit me right so that would work well but that's basically the way I went with that now before we call this video quits just to point out some stats here uh, I have fortitude 14 reflex 9 will 13 not the best numbers ever fortitude is actually better than my will which is a little freaky but that's probably more because my cons up and my wisdom's down but they're basically comparable but my reflex even though it's nine which is sucking remember I'm getting a plus three thanks to the dex so it really should be super low so we are not really a reflex based build that's okay there's nothing wrong with that we didn't really take feats that would capitalize on a high reflex save anyway because we didn't have one so we have to have to be mindful of the fact that AOE moves are probably gonna hit us so we just have to make sure to find those targets take those targets out quickly from there the last thing to point out is going to be the actual spell picks well actually first let's go to the uh, abilities you see we have quite a few toggles running right now we have spell combat which we already talked about this allows us to cast a spell and then attack with a weapon each combat round uh, again it's like dual wielding one with the spell one with the weapon if I want to attack with the spell I can do so but I take that minus two penalty which is negated if I'm not mistaken by this true magus attack bonus and that will also work with the weapon because it gets a minus two penalty but then it'll get a plus two bonus because of this being on two basically this will negate if you will the penalty from spell combat is the way to look at that you see here's our dog familiar giving me my plus three bonus to uh, nature lore as well as a plus two bonus to my perception checks and in the cute folks look at his wagging little tail we have of course uh, acrobatics mobility the traditional charge uh, because we have high charisma demoralized persuasion is up here i'm probably never going to use it i've never tried it before uh, we have our arcane weapon enchantment so this is our pool points right that we're talking about i have seven of them if i were to lose that greater spell or greater uh, weapon focus for the rapier i could get extra arcane weapon pool points so that's a, an entire possibility uh, from there though we have the spell strike one on and this is the one that like I said if you use a melee touch attack in the beginning of the combat it will go towards your weapon and then your weapon swings and if it connects it will discharge the spell so that's what spell strike does uh, doesn't work on a bunch of spells but they really have to be melee touch attacks and I'm almost certain that they have to be magus or majors or, or wizard slash sorcerer spell touch attacks because I don't think I, I think I tested it with several of the cleric spells and it didn't work and they are touch attacks as well um, we have the ability to enchant our weapon to either make it flaming frost damage shock keen which is kind of a waste you just basically make sure you have a keen weapon so you don't have to use this ever 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 uh, we have enduring blade on this will again allow us to activate a buff to our weapon which matter of fact let's just do that now weapon enchantments Let's see if I can pop up my inventory. You see how my rapier now is a magical rapier. Plus five enhancement to that bad boy. So I'm really rocking a plus five weapon. Look at my attack bonus. It's up to 27 now. My damage is increased as well. It's the equivalent of me using a plus five weapon. Now granted this is cheating because I'm level 20 and this is like the tutorial. But this would work in the game as intended. Plus one and steady progression up to plus five. I can of course make it flaming or whatever else I want to do but I have to activate these things and spend a point to do it same with this dimension strike now watch this one if you really want to make sure you hit your target I can ignore all his armor by doing a dimension strike it costs two points to do it but it basically resolves uh, for my entire round the ability for me to treat my rapier as a melee touch attack so I ignore all their armor and go right through them pretty sweet I have, of course, all these other ones up here to increase speed, 
brilliant energy, which basically does some stuff where it ignores armor. Uh, Bane, so that I do more damage against Bane foes, right? So basically my target. Uh, ghost Touch, this allows me to ignore the 50% reduction of things like ghosts, you know, ones that are incorporeal creatures. Basically I'm hitting them guaranteed, very nice. I can do shock damage, frost damage, or fire damage if I activate one of these three. And that's without me using things like uh, spells to buff the attack in the first place. It's kind of nice. So that's the abilities in a nutshell. And again, we have these three down here, plus two to attack or plus two to my DCs and my spells while it's on or uh, plus two to my spell resistance penetration. So my ability to, to hit a target that has spell resistance. Very nice. From there, we have spells. A better way to do this is to look at the book. And we have spell penetration at 20, caster level is 20, concentration is at 24, which is meaningless now because I have level 20, which means concentration checks will always work. I have 0% chance of spell failure, and you'll note that I am wearing armor. And again, so that means everything's working. And if I had full plate on, I still would be at zero, which I love for this build. Notice how many spells per day I have at level six, or sorry, at uh, level one. I have six per day of any of these, any permutation thereof. Same at level two, three. I've already used one at level four, but again, I could have six a day. I could have five a day at level five, five a day at level six. And the only way to make these go up is to invest in, in my case, charisma. The higher my charisma, the more uses per day I'm going to get of spells. The other trick is diversifying. Remember all those meta magic feats that we had? This is why you have them, and you want them on a spontaneous caster like a Magus, like an Eldritch Scion, or a Sorcerer, or a, what's the, Bard, or a Inquisitor, which is the Divine version. And if you have at least one meta magic feat, say Extend or Reach, you can take your spells, Go to this page where it says meta magic you zoop into this like there go to level one pick your spell and drag whatever meta magic you have to it you'll see that the new spell level is listed here so it was a level one spell a plus one because i'm extending the reach of the spell from touch to a ranged attack and now i can cast it i can label it in a specific color scheme so that i know that it's always going to be blue in this corner it means it's a ranged increase so it reaches meta magic supplied so now a touch spell becomes Close range, close range spell becomes medium range, medium range becomes long range if I use this meta magic feat. If I go the other route, I could uh, empower it, or in this case, maximize it, guaranteeing that if I hit the target, I'll do the full 20 points of damage, not counting their ability to resist it with like acid resistance or electrical resistance or spell resistance or what have you. If it works and they're susceptible, they'll take full damage guaranteed. But now, this turned a level 1 spell into a level 4 spell. And while we can do that, I probably wouldn't use it a lot. If I really needed an acid attack and I didn't have any other way to do acid, which I do, then maybe I'd have no other choice but to use this spell now. I can cast acid with a dragon's breath, but there's a reflex save. So if there's sneaky little ninjas, they may reflex their way out of it and take zero damage. So if I really need to hit that guy, well, here's the way to do it. As long as I make the melee touch attack, he no can defend, and he's going to take full acid damage, in this case of 20 acid damage. So maybe it will be worth it. So it's kind of micromanaging your battle a little more than most people are used to, but it's worth doing, I'd say. So now here's Shock and Grasp, and we're going to do basically the same thing for it. We're going to give it a better range. So now it's, uh, melee touch attack can be cast as a range touch attack, so to speak. Uh, we will go back again and do the maximized version of it so it does full damage if we want. So there it is now, and then again it'll be a level 4 spell. So if I hit them, they will take 30 points of electrical damage, guaranteed. They can resist it and whatever, but they'll still take that damage. Now the weird thing is, is I think the game still treats these as touch attacks, the melee touch attacks. What I mean by that is if I want to cast this spell, even this uh, uh, meta magic enhanced version of this spell, if I want to cast this spell and attack using my sword and using Shocking Grass through the sword, I think it'll still work. We can actually test that outside. But uh, I believe that is true. We can also, I 
actually didn't do it, but we can actually add more than one metamagic feat to them. You see, my spell levels are starting to get out of control. Why would you ever want this as a level 5 spell? But again, the point is that you may need it. That's why metamagics are so nice. So here's a level 5 version of Shocking Grass. This is a level 1 spell that we've bumped up to be closer range, so we can shoot it out, and does full damage. Maybe that's worth it to you guys. Maybe we don't have any other electrical damage at level 5. This will be the only way for us to do that damage. That's why you want to do stuff like this with metamagic. So, I could spend all day doing this. I'm not going to. But I could actually do this for you guys and show you how to make a massively huge spell book. Notice that we can upgrade these guys, but there's nowhere for them to go. They're level 6. Now it's level 7. I cannot cast a level 7 spell. There's no point in upgrading any of the level 6s. The only one you can upgrade a level 6 spell with metamagic is metamagic heighten. Because it really has, instead of being an increase by 1, or 3, or 2, or 4, it increases it by nothing. So it's just a heightened version of the same level spell. It increases the DC a little bit, but we really don't need that, so I didn't bother getting that metamagic feat. So... If I do this throughout, and the ones that I'd really like to bump are the ones that I can extend. Imagine having True Strike that you cast once, and for two rounds now, you pretty much guaranteed to hit your target. That's a lot of attacks. That's not just once, that's True Strike at the beginning, and I have a, an ability to do that called Spell Combat, and I can start swinging with my sword right after. Add a penalty, but now I got a plus 20 bonus that will more than override that penalty. Pretty much making me a whoop ass machine of destruction and i get many many castings of this in a day so that's nice i could uh, buff up my shield spell make sure that it lasts for a good long while on my character i don't want these things to fall off me so this is a good way for me to have other castings i can increase the damage the range the stun effect of snowball uh, i could increase the rain enfeeblement watch this if i really wanted to make sure that i floored a fighter this is what this does. It's a level 4 spell now because of this enhancement. Let's go look at that Raven Feeblement. It's maximized. What that means is, instead of it being 1d6 plus 5, it is now 6 plus 5 because it maximizes the effect. It's guaranteed, if it hits, to be a 6. And then the plus 5 is already there. So basically, I am guaranteeing that I will sap 11 strength from any target that I hit with this ranged touch attack. Now they have a fortitude save that can cut that in half, which means I'm assuming they round down, so 11 becomes 5. But that's still 5 points of strength that I just sapped a big tough barbarian or fighter from, right? And for a decent amount of time. That's a pretty good bump. So that means that their damage is less, their attack chance is less, they're not carrying as much, or they're, they're more likely because they're not just going to drop gear. They're just going to be moving extra slower because they're overweight now. And that's a nice little spell for me. So even Maximize has its benefits. I don't know that I would really want to use it, but again, it's there in my back pocket in case I do. From there, things like uh, Mirror Image, you'd want to have extended. If you wanted to make sure, because when you do Mirror Image Roll, you have 1d4 images, uh, plus one more image for three caster levels to a maximum of eight total surround your character. Basically, these are duplicates that get tacked instead of you. Well, that 1d4 images is random, unless I maximize it. If I maximize it, then it is 4. It's the highest number, guaranteed. So I will get 8 images around my character if I use a maximized mirror image spell. Would I? I might need it. You know, I'm not going to say no. And not only can I maximize it, but I can extend it. Or I can extend and maximize it. So again, I'll have multiple levels of casting of mirror image. And this is really the beauty of this type of build. Now, I've rambled on long enough. You don't need to see all that. We'll actually get into a fight in the next video. But this is basically how you would build your spell book. By tweaking out with the various meta magics. Sense vitals is going to be nice. Extra damage or range from their range touch attacks will be helpful. Something that's medium range or close range. Uh, this one will not benefit from long range. This one will benefit from extended, but I don't think it works properly. So I can extend the duration of the spell because it ticks over time. I don't think that it actually works as you think. So it'll be a new casting of a higher level, but it will not really benefit anyway.
but again, it's another casting of Acid Arrow. Why not have it? Uh, other spells, of course, like uh, Vampire Touch, I'll be able to force through my weapon, doing damage to a target, and then, of course, healing myself as a result, or, excuse me, giving myself temporary hit points for an hour. That's pretty nice. I could see using that quite a bit in a heavy fight. Um, and I can maximize that, guaranteeing that if I hit my target, that I get a full 60 hit points every time, you know, and they do a full 60 damage to them. It's pretty cool. Hey, spells nice. It'd be nice to have that extended, right? So I can capitalize on having that on for longer periods of time. I could uh, slow the target for longer, do it at farther range. And that's, again, what Madam Magic is really going to do for you in this type of build. Could you do it on a Sorcerer build too? Sure. Could you do it on a Bard build? Yeah. You could also do it, like I said, on the Inquisitor build. That's the Divine class. So any of those builds that you're getting those spontaneous castings, I highly suggest you get at least one meta magic and have it be one that increases the spell level. It sounds weird because heightness is cheap and it does nothing, right? You know, it's at zero. That's awesome. So it's better and it didn't cost me anything. That's not our goal here. Our goal is to have multiple castings across our spell book. That's what you're going to want to do. Now with that, uh, try to get out of here. There's a couple spells that you see that won't have any meta magic that you can cast on. It, it just work. Dimension Door is a fine example. Uh, there's ones that only have one bump. Uh, maximize is the only thing that will work for this Dragon's Breath. But uh, again, do you really need to do anything better than you know long-ranged attack that's going to do a retarded amount of damage to a specific uh, cone or a narrow beam? I'm cool with that. And that's a pretty good spell now. Um, see, is there anything else I want to point out? Remember, oh yeah, here we go. Here's one that is a complete waste. Dragon's Breath cannot be made because we do not have any level 7 access, right? So that's not going to do us any good. Boo. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. You're making all these theoretical level 7, 8, and 9 spells that you cannot use because you do not have access to level 7, 8, or 9 as a, a magus. So I sorcerers would benefit better, but sorcerers don't have the attack bonus that I have. Sorcerers don't have the ability to wear plate mail and still cast spells like I do. Sorcerers don't have the ability to cast spells through their sword like I do. So there's a little give and take. It still makes them interesting to me. And again, you're not going to be able to upgrade any of these level 6 spells because, again, there's nowhere for them to go. So start looking at level 5 and work your way back would be how I would do it. But with that, my name is Brother Mutant. Please like, subscribe, flame me in the comment sections for how I'm doing this stupidly or how you think, oh, why did you even pick that spell? That's a complete piece of crap. Tell me what you guys are doing on your builds. Tell me what you guys think is a better build. I'm fine with that. My build by no stretch of the imagination is perfect. And my spell picks, I'll probably go back through this one more time and narrow it down now that I know what I'm looking for to make sure that I have fire spells through several levels. Acid spells through several levels, cold spells through several levels. You get the idea. This is the reason that you do spontaneous casting and meta magic. But with that, I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.